He said, at certain stage of their development, the material productive of society, or the force of production, come into conflict with existing relation of production. From form of development of the productive force, as the productive force develops, these relations, flaws, serve relations, come, become factors, chain, it's, it's food chain, that pull back, tie, you know, tie the technology. The technology wants to make advancement, it cannot, because relationship of production act as the chain, you know, that tie them down. Technology cannot make advancement. There, there. Begins this a period of social revolution because the existing relations prevent the new forces and new class from developing. With the change in the economic kind of foundation, the entire human superstructure is being more or less rapidly transformed. This one is the materialist idea that says the base controls the superstructure. Once the economic foundation is, uh, has changed, the big superstructure will be transformed. Now, superstructure will be transformed. Yeah? Later, we will pick up one word called structural transformation. That will go against structural differentiation. Yeah? We'll come later. But from here, we've got his idea. Yeah? And then from this paragraph, there's a few, quite a few things there like materialist idea, base change, superstructure change. Superstructure will be transformed. Okay, and then all these. So, the society has changed many times. Historical materialism. History of society is a history of, uh, that is based on economy. Okay, this is so changed. What changed the what? The first type of society must label it as communism. Primitive type. Primitive communism. Hunters gathers, no class, no surface. Society peaceful, no extraction of surface. In fact, the starting point of surface is the starting point of all problems we have today. Yeah, when society creates surplus, that's when people want to chase this surplus, want to have more than others. And that is when you have class. People who have more, less. Hunter and gatherers, people who are poor. Yeah? There is no rich and poor, there's only male and female. If you were to make that distinction, you know, among people. Male hunters, female gatherers. But other than that, Eventually, he said, society will be changed to communism 
Socialism is just a premature stage. You remember you got this idea from the French Revolution when you moved to France? The idea of socialism, you got it when you moved to France. The idea of revolution is socialism. He said all society will move into that direction. Yeah, how would it move to that direction? Through revolution. Communism will be created. But this time, not primitive. Because technology changed, you can't go back to the primitive type again. But he would like society to move back to communism, where everything is shared. Yeah? No one exploit another one. Classless. So we don't have the haves and the have -nots. Yeah? Everybody should share all the societal resources. one direction, and we cannot reverse. So to Marx, uh, it, it has to start with creative communism, really, uh, when we started to you know, come to Earth, you know, become human beings here. We live in caves, we live as hunter and gatherers. Slowly, with the surplus, society changed. It changed into Asiatic, and then ancient, and then feudal. You won't have capitalism if you don't have feudal first. And then you won't have communism if society hasn't gone through capitalism when the rubbish of the past has not accumulated. He called it rubbish of the past. He said this. He said when society changed into here capitalism, right? Nothing much really has changed. Nothing much has been transformed. He didn't talk about structural transformation at that time. He said, in fact, class remain class. Exploitation become worse and worse and worse. He said, when the change last time, no major change. Rubbish of the past, he called it. Just keep accumulating. And you see, uh, capitalism now, big, huge power of rubbish. What is that rubbish? Class, inequality, exploitation. All these become getting worse and worse and worse. So you need to reach the period of capitalism when the situation gets the worst among all these societies. Then there will be a period of revolution. This time, communism will have no similarities with capitalism. Yeah? Mainly it will be classless. There will be something called structural transfer. Society is transformed into communism, classless, peaceful, happily ever after. The end. The end. Really, it's the end stage. No more class, no more conflict, no more exploitation, no more change. Yeah? That is his ideal society, a utopia, we call it. Utopia, U T O P I A. A utopia communism. The society that is peaceful, that is everybody, nobody go hungry anymore. Okay? So that is Marx. So we did class, we did dialectic, we did soul change. Well, just thinking. Why are you call him conflict? Why are you call him conflict? This side is it. Because society
society is most of the time in a state of balance, right? Can we say society is most of the time in a state of conflict? Yes. Yeah. Society is most of the time in a state of conflict. Yeah. How many forms of conflict are there? How many forms of conflict are there? Now you know that. You know things, many aspects of math, right? And the next hurdle for you is how to bring this to us. Yeah? <clears throat> so we're going to have to tackle that writing very soon before you start submitting your first assignment. Uh, in fact, next week, I'll start giving you the question. Yeah. I would hope that you spend two weeks preparing the answer. Some students say, oh no, I spent so long doing this paper. I spent four hours. <laughs> no, 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 you're supposed to spend at least four days. You've got to be specialized on one guy. You have to specialize on a guy. You have to keep reading and reading and reading until you say, okay, I know. Okay, I'm going to sit down and write something about it. Okay. okay, so change. Can you read this part, see if you understand or not? The Parsons one, I didn't give you last time because we didn't really do this so change. But first I'm trying to prepare. So I give you this. You talk about the type from primitive, those hunted together, into intermediate, which is about a big civilization, into modern, which is American society during this time. Math is a materialist who's not true. 
not true. You can interpret them into ideas as well, you know? But don't confuse yourself. Just get the key to it. Now, if we say the kind Carson's evolutionary, how should we label Marx? Revolution. Very good. Revolutionary. Due to direct restraints. Or you can say due to conflict at the material base. Or due to conflict. And that's the types of conflict. In whole structural differentiation, division of labor, this side of mass, what would you say? If it is not structural, if structural differentiation means simple society, now start having division of labor, split into many divisions. Just now I mentioned one word for you to use that. Marx looked at society, especially change from capitalism to communism, when the structure, when the structure totally transformed into something totally different. Because when there's no class, everything else will be different, family will be different, religion will all be different. We call it structural transformation. And there are these things. You know, all these theories, uh, as you know it, uh, you ask me to do Marx well, uh, I need three lectures. <coughs> you know? So, but here we're saying, okay, just do it basic. Uh. And you know, this one is not even that basic. <laughs> but, yeah. Because by right, if we do it well, we need a lot of time, we need to do exercise, we need to, you to remember what is the force of production, what is the means of production, what is the dialectic, and all that actually. Labor theory of value, two classes, 
plus conflict. Those are all the major offenses, yeah? including alienation. Yeah? Alienation is a very important concept, you know. We got from Koi Ba, religious alienation. Why? Okay. Do you remember the time wearing his lenses? He saw people egoistic. Remember egoistic? That's why he said we need moral regulation. <laughs> Social integration, moral regulation. We need moral regulation. To keep control of egoism. To keep that grip in check.
and leave us being alienated. There are four types of workers alienation, yeah? Alienated from the products, the process. Other workers and ourselves. I produce this. Every day I come and sit and do this. Do I own it? Can I bring home? No. This is supposed to be the fruit of my labor. It's supposed to be the expression of my labor. I don't own it. I am becoming stranger to the very things that I produce. I'm alienated from the product. Do I know the whole process? No. I just do this little thing. I know this little thing. Now, this water is easy. We will talk about automobile, yeah? You know, you do all this little thing, you don't even know this little thing where in the automobile you don't fit, you know? You don't know the whole process. Do you don't know other workers? You are not yourself. Because yourself is supposed to be creative. They don't want it from process, from other people, and for it from themselves, from their basic human nature. Another thing that alienate people is class. Class. One class exploit the other class, the other class suffer, the subordinate class suffer. How to make them be able to bear the situation, give them wrong ideas. You know? Blinding from the real knowledge. No? So, this is class, class division. Superstructure is being used to keep people's false bed or false consciousness. Yes? Idea of work hard is good for capitalism. The idea of being disciplined, listen to rules, listen to authority, doing finance and not sociology. These are all the requirements of capitalism and that is something that will serve the system. That superstructure is used to instill us with these values, capitalistic values. These are all the values that will serve the system. Everything we are doing here. You know, just like the time the person said, you know, we are doing things because we are functional to the system. You must say exactly the same. We are functional to the system. We serve the function important in this system. We are doing everything we are doing because the system needs to survive. <coughs> In fact, exactly the same idea. But here, Marx talk about capitalist system. Capitalist system creates the superstructure. And everything that is created in the superstructure is created to maintain capitalism. Everything, family, religion, values, all the ideas that we have, you know, we are instilled these values because these values maintain capitalism. This is wrong values. This is false consciousness. Yeah, he got the idea from Foyba, religious alienation. <coughs> Must believe that the working class can be liberated from this alienated state and realize its full potential by the practices. Put theory into action. So, to liberalize us from this alien state, from exploitation of all the bad things of the system, we want to get rid of the system to action. Theory is not for the sake of knowing. Yeah? Theory is for the sake of action. Okay? That's according to Marx. Marx would say, the kind of hope and all those kind of theory is useless. What is good to know is that knowing doesn't lead to any action. You've got to take action to improve the situation. 
and not be able to have that kind of practice. So we get people to move people. Not to motivate people. Once they understand, they will do something. That is practice. Put their Now, this part here, you won't write it. You won't write it. If you don't recognize this, that's my process. If you don't recognize this, because they hear the role of leader, is that? That is microsociology, and next week you have to understand. Microsociology is a deliberate choice of people to live. Yeah? So, if you want to write alienation, but you don't want to recognize microsociology, you don't have to write this part. Yes, I do. Because this one become too micro already. You got it? But the idea that division of labor create alienation and all that, that is, doesn't matter, it's micro or macro, yeah? Division of labor create alienation. We are in the factory, we are, we, we are alienated from products and process. That one is a general idea. Yeah, it doesn't matter macro or macro. But once it comes to this point, this is micro. Yeah. So if you write it in the context of macro, you cannot write that. But if you just write alienation, lah. Like, and you didn't uh, write in the context of what, yeah, macro, micro, that might okay, can continue writing into this one. Depends, it depends very much on whether, when you write, you recognize macro, micro, or you didn't write that part. Yeah, if you didn't write that part, okay, you can continue to say, you really need leaders. Leaders are important in initiating action or revolution. Right? Lending, you know lending? Then it said, without leadership workers won't understand. They become economistic. They just struggle for money. They don't know why they struggle for money. In fact, you need leaders to make them understand that condition that they feel, but they cannot voice it. Yeah? Leadership has that function, you know. Leadership brings things that people, people it is real, but they don't know why. They don't know the reason. Make it real to them. And that's why you have a lot of people are follow Mao, follow Lenin, follow Marx. These are leaders. These are leaders who can bring about practices because they understand. They make people understand and they guide action. Yeah? They help people to start revolution. Okay, see what you just said. What did Mark say about it? 